Hey everyone, Dan from FP Geeks here, and today I'm going to be reviewing this wild little guy, the Mont Blanc Bohème Dui. Now, before we get started, let me apologize up front because there's going to be a lot of French in this video, and it's not the kind I can pronounce. So, if when I butcher it, I'm sorry. If you're not familiar with the Bohème, its main attraction is its retractable nib. It's a sweet little pocket pen that's available in a variety of styles, so if this gold-plated version doesn't do it for you, take a look at a few of these other options. The Dewey Platinum, the Dewey Ligna, the Bleu, the Paso Doble Rouge, the Paso Doble Bleu, the Noir, the Rouge, and the Marron. These are just a few that you can currently buy at retail, and there are a lot more options out there, especially versions that have been discontinued. So if you like how this pen performs, but don't care so much for that uh, gold and black version you see here, do a little searching. I'm sure you'll find one that suits you. The primary design element on this Bohem are the dimples that run the full length of the cap and barrel and the ostentatious use of gold plating. I actually like the effect the dimples create and I usually don't mind so much gold plating, but here it just seems a bit much. If the gold was platinum or rhodium, I'd be shouting my love for this pen from the rooftops. While Mont Blanc does offer the Bohème in a variety of styles with platinum trim, this design unfortunately isn't one of them. The first thing you'll probably notice about the cap is the ridiculous synthetic gemstone. They come in several different colors depending on the version, and it's a design element I just can't stand. There are a few early designs that don't have the gem, but the clip still doesn't look right. It really needs to be redesigned. I mean, after inspecting the entire pen, the clip just seems like a total afterthought. One thing I do want to show off is the detail in the cap, because the video just doesn't capture it. If you look closely, you can see these finely engraved lines that add a wonderful texture to the cap. And just like every Mont Blanc, the white rounded star adorns the top of the cap. But by far, the coolest aspect of this pen is its retractable nib mechanism. The cap unthreads in one and a half revolutions, and to the uninitiated offers a nice surprise when they see there's no nib under the cap. The cap requires slightly more than one revolution to thread onto the rear of the pen, and slightly less than one revolution to fully extend the nib. And it feels spectacular. The entire unit slides so smoothly in and out of the pen, you would think it was on greased ball bearings. Then, near the end of the stroke, when extending the nib, you feel the resistance increase and suddenly release, like there's a detent that locks the nib in the extended position. When you put it all together, extending and retracting the nib feels like you're operating a high-quality, well-constructed instrument, and you'll most likely find yourself just sitting, extending and retracting the nib. It's quite addictive. If we take a closer look at the section, you'll find that Mont Blanc has added some detailing that reminds me a lot of the cap bands on the Meisterstück line. You've got one thick band with an imprint that reads Mont Blanc Bohème and one thin band on either side. It's a nice addition that accents the pen well, especially considering there's no actual cap bands on the cap. If there's any other element of this pen that's as cool as the retractable nib mechanism, it's the nib itself. This particular pen has an 18 karat gold nib, while it seems like many of the more recent versions have 14 karat nibs. If you're familiar with the 146 or 149, then you'll instantly recognize the imprint as they're identical. If you look at the base of the nib, you'll see the three digit designation 144. This is the same number four size nib found in the 144, but for some reason it looks a whole lot better in this pen. The feed is made from plastic, but does an a job managing ink flow. I do want to note that the nib and feed can easily be pulled from the pen for tuning or cleaning or what have you, which is something I miss when dealing with the 146 and the 149. If you're worried about capping the pen with the nib extended or accidentally extending the nib when the pen is capped, don't. Mont Blanc has you covered. It's difficult to see, but centered inside the cap, is a metal rod, and if you try to do either of the two actions I just mentioned, that rod will run into a flat spot on the front of the feed, stopping any damage from being done. It's the same safety mechanism that's been in place on safety pins made more than a hundred years ago. Earlier I described the Bohem as a pocket pin, and it is, but let's see how it stacks up to a few popular pins. From left to right we have the Pelican M805, 
the Pelican M200, the Pilot Prera, the Twisby Mini, the Boehm, the Quaco All Sport, the Carandash Ecuador XS, and the Mont Blanc 149. Uncapped, it's a little bit longer than the other pocket pens, but not quite long enough for me to use comfortably for anything longer than a memo on a sticky note. As with any pocket pen, you really need to post it to make it comfortable. I've left the 149 unposted to better illustrate just how long these compact pens can become when posted. They're all very usable in this configuration. As I mentioned before, the Bohem is just too small for me to use not posted. It almost disappears in my hand. And really, it doesn't make sense to not use this pen posted. When you uncap it, you're going to have to twist the end knob, so you might as well use the cap and post it in the process. Filling the pen is a simple affair. Pop open the end knob and keep a good grip on it, then twist the barrel to eject the cartridge. There is not a lot of room here, so unfortunately this pen is cartridge only. Usually that's a deal breaker for me, but not in this case because the nib is awesome. Let me elaborate on that. This pen was sent to me to be tuned, and it was shipped with a cartridge installed. Normally I'd expect a huge mess inside the cap, but there was only a small drop of ink on the nib, and even a smaller drop inside the cap. The feed handled any temperature and pressure changes perfectly, and it wrote without hesitation right out of the box. Not even the jostling from the USPS could upset the feed. That's impressive. The other instance where this pen left me impressed was at the end of the studio session where I shoot all the photos and videos for the review. The pen spends 2-3 to three hours uncapped under two soft boxes that create a warmer than usual climate. Add to the mix a fan that keeps the air circulating and you've got a less than fountain pen friendly environment. When I first started shooting these reviews I would leave pens ink during the shooting process and they'd be bone dry when it was time to do the writing sample which is why I started filling them immediately beforehand. With the Bohem, I left it ink the entire time, and it wrote right from the first stroke. It wasn't a perfect stroke, it did take 3 or 4 lines for flow to come back 100%, but the fact that it wrote at all when so many other high-end pens failed to do so under the same circumstances is a testament to the quality of the feed in the Bohem. Then there's the nib itself, which is soft and smooth, and free of any issues like the dreaded hard start. I was completely blown away by the Bowen's performance. It's a dream to write with and the feed works miracles inside that pen. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to use this pen because I would have totally skipped over it never to have given it a second thought. As far as pricing goes, it really depends on which version you pick. I've seen the Bohem Noir, that's the black with platinum trim, sell for as low as $530 brand new. The Bohem Dewey that I have here sells for just over $1,000. Personally, I'd look for a used one on eBay. If you're concerned about getting a fake, well, I've never seen a fake Bohem before. Not to say that they're not out there, but if you pay with PayPal, they're usually very good about covering the buyer. Anyway, the Bohem is an awesome pen, and I'm really glad I had the opportunity to use it. I'll definitely be looking to add one to my own collection. So thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please click that like button down below and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.